Good evening, everyone. My name is Lee Brumbach. I'm the pastor here at St. Paul's Lutheran in Funkstown, and it's so good to have you all with us as we gather on this Thanksgiving Eve to give thanks for all the blessings that we enjoy in our lives. It's good to be with my brothers, uh, Pastor Randy, Pastor Chris, who are uh, participating in the service uh, tonight in various ways. Um, we look forward to worshiping together as we gather as a community of bro brothers and sisters in Christ. As we gather for worship this morning, we begin with a prelude by our bell choir. Thank you. I invite you now, if you stand as you're able, to join me for our order of confession and forgiveness that is printed on page one in your bulletin. We gather this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We take a moment of silence for reflection. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have built walls instead of tables and have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love, to welcome those you send, and to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from our ways to your ways and free us to serve those in need. Amen. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, 
so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We sing together our gathering hymn.
I just have to say, thank you, brother. It, my, my crowd never knows what's coming for me, and that was, that was great, so thank you. <laughs> Let's join together in our call to worship, printed in your bulletins. It's a responsive reading. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, and call upon his name. God blesses us with gifts of love. God blesses us with daily work. God protects us in time of danger. God calls us into relationship with him. Therefore shall we offer thanks and praise to the Lord our God. The Lord our God, we give thanks to you forever. And let's join together in the prayer of the day. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Here our first reading tonight that comes to us from Joel chapter 2, verses 21 to 27. Do not fear, O soil. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and vine give their full yield. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the latter rain as before. The threshing floor shall be full of grain, the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never, never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there is no other, and my people shall never again be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bell Choir, you are fabulous, and I look forward to hearing from you again.
Please stand and let us join together uh, as I read the scripture, read the gospel, Matthew 6, 25 through 33. No one can serve two masters, for a servant will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you eat or what you drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is it not life more than food and body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into burns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more of value than they are, than they? And can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. We'd like to thank Pastor Lee and the St. Paul uh, Church for your hospitality and for your welcome. We are so grateful for uh, letting us join again together. Uh, last year, we barely had people in the congregation as Pastor Lee brought the word. Pastor uh, Randy wasn't feeling well, but thanks be to God. Today is a little different. We gather to praise God and to thank him for all that he has done for us. And thank you for the beautiful music choir. You did so beautifully. God bless you richly. Church, I ask you, how many of you are warriors who worry all the time? All right. I got somebody like me. We worry all the time. And we worry about life. We worry about food. We worry about, did we lock the church? Did we lock the doors? Did we lock the, um, the door of the car? One time, I was up somewhere in Baltimore City. And I forgot to lock the car. So, and it dawned on me, I did not lock the car. And I thought maybe when I come back, everything in the car will be gone. I came back, everything was intact. I said, in Baltimore City, you didn't lock the car and everything is good. Yeah, but we worry about everything. Sometimes science and people in science have said that worrying is good. They've said that when we worry, it helps motivate us. It helps us get up and do things to protect ourselves. It helps us stay away from danger. Um, it helps us not to, be, not to betray our values. So worrying, some scientists say, is good for you. Some even say we need to worry. Yes, we worry, don't we? We worry daily. We worry about life. I don't think Jesus is saying do not worry at all. I think Jesus is addressing the excessive worry that sometimes occupies our lives. We all worry about something, our children. We worry for our grandchildren. We worry for our church. We worry for our community, our city. When we see people in drugs and addictions, we worry what will happen. Yesterday I was asking, one, in a meeting, I asked one member there who was a teacher, and I said to her, how are the students doing? And she said, oh, there is just this big problem, students not coming to school, absentia being a problem. And I thought, that is a big problem because then what's the future for that, for, for these kids? And she told me, there's one girl in her school who has only attended 10 days this year. 
And I said, somebody should be worried about her. Yes, we worry about children, our students. We worry about the economy. We worry about race relations. Can we get along? Can we work together? Can we be one people despite our differences? We worry about illegal immigration. We worry about the cost of health. We worry about education, our kids getting the best, are some left behind. Your yeah, worry and anxiety are the opposite of thanksgiving. If you want anything to take away the joy from you, then begin to worry about things. And I don't know why it happens. We worry most at night. Everything seems to come back to you when you're laying down your head. And you begin to go through everything that happened and never happened and what will happen and what will never happen. And we're just in a race to worry about everything. We are just experts at worrying. Will my investment work? Will my business survive? Are the companies are laying off people? Today, Brother Edward told me that CVS is going to be laying, closing about 900 stores. When he said CVS is going to close 900 stores, my, my, my heart just sank. I said, how about those employees? What will happen to them? Their families. But we also worry about what do people, how do people judge me? How do people see me? How do people deal with me? How do people, do they criticize me all the time? Are people going to uh, say nasty things about me? We worry about our presentation sometimes. And worry sometimes can lead to death. There are some times when we worry so much that all the joy and all the trust in God is lost. I want to challenge you this evening, brothers and sisters. When Jesus told us about the lilies in the field, he wasn't dismissive of our need for food and clothing, but Jesus had just been on the mountaintop, on the summon, summon on the mount, and he had been talking about those major human problems like anger, prayer, reconciliation, divorce, adultery, how you deal with your enemies, how you deal with money and power. Jesus had been dealing with those issues, but now he's coming down to some of one of the main things about human beings, the excessive worry that ruins so many lives. Excessive worry will bring anxiety. And with anxiety, you, uh, you get separated from God. Because you won't be able to trust God anymore. You are so worried. Where is God? Maybe I'd got to take things in my own hands. And Satan is good in taking away our joy and our trust in the Lord. Jesus is challenging the disciples that we should, use, we should not use the lens of worry and anxiety in making the decisions of life. Jesus wants the disciples. He wants us to use the lens of faith as we make our decisions trusting in him. Very often we think that we'll, we're in charge, we'll take care of it. And sometimes we realize, no, we're not in charge. He's in charge all along. He said, just look at everything I've made. When we wake up, when you look outside, I like some that look out and I look at the moon and I wonder which planets are lining up tonight. Is it Jupiter? Is it Mars? Is it Venus? What is it? But all of it is about the wonder of what God has done. And you can't help but say, you are great. You are wonderful. Look at that. A billion miles away. Many millions miles away. All your creation. But because so much worry gets into us, it takes away our trust in God. Sometimes there could be small things that we worry about. But if we cannot trust God in the small things, how are we going to trust God in the bigger things? And so Jesus, he isn't saying that everything should be wonderful and everything is going to work out the way we want. What Jesus wants us is to have that 
to understand the gracious how our heavenly God in his grace and mercy sustains us, keeps us, and that what he wants us to be is to have those eyes of faith constantly on him. He gives us a framework of how we can live our lives. Yes, there are all the things to worry about, but he says, this is the first thing you got to do. Seek the kingdom of God first. And all other things will be added to you. Sometimes we think we'll reverse that. We'll do everything in our power. And then we think we've got some little time to worship and praise God. Let me remind you, my brothers and sisters, Jesus has given us a formula of trusting him and living in faith is seek him first. When we seek him first and look at everything through him, through God, it doesn't matter what would worry us and cause us to stay up all night. We'll still say, he'll take care of that. He's a way maker. He would do it for me just like he did it years ago. He would do it for me just like he did for that brother, for that sister, because you sought him first. When you seek God first, you are always reminded of what God has done in the past. You see, when we lose memory of what God has done for us in the past, then we worry to death, we worry ourselves, and we lose our, our trust, we lose our faith in him. Jesus uses the lilies of the field just as examples of, about the handiwork of God. He says, don't you see what I've done? Can't you trust me? In 97, I was on a train in Colorado going up the Rocky Mountains. And as I saw those Rocky Mountains, I couldn't help but say, God made this. If somebody said there's no God, I don't know where their mind is. I saw those Rocky Mountains and the way they laid out, and all I had to say was, you are a wonderful God. You made all of this? Look at all this wonder. When you see God in everything that God has done, or when you seek the signs of where God has been and where God is, the fear and the worry that we have evaporates. Because then you're left with a wonderful God, who cares? He cares for the lilies. He cares for the animals, the birds. They have no burns, but yet they eat. What Jesus is pointing to, he's pointing to the tender care of God for us. Church, God cares for us. God cares for you. God knows your concerns. God knows your health. God knows your struggles. And Jesus is saying, this God cares. He didn't create us and go away. He cares. Every day as we travel in the valley of the shadow of death, he walks with us. He will never leave us alone. Discipleship is about being in pursuit of God. Paul said, all I want to know is Jesus Christ, the power that raised him from the dead. I just want to know Jesus, that's all. Because when you know the power that raised Christ from the dead, when you get to know Jesus who he is, nothing is going to worry you to death. Nothing will keep you awake because you know who is in charge. He cares. Cast all your burdens. Cast all your cares on him. And when we seek the kingdom of God first, we adopt the values of God. We align ourselves to the priorities of God. What does God want me to do? What does God want me to be? Want me to be loving? Wants me compassionate? Wants me forgiving? And when you live with those values, nothing is going to worry you about that brother, about that sister, about what Satan may be doing. Because you have rested yourself in him who cares about you. We live in a different system from what Jesus is teaching. Society, 
The society we live in worries about everything. Who's against me? Who is with me? Who's backstabbing me? Who is my friend? Jesus says you trust in God. He will help you as you navigate through life. He says, he asked, what is worrying going to do for you? Is it going to add a day for you on your life? No. Is it going to make you even stronger? No. And he says, therefore, trust God. I want to encourage you tonight to practice God's love of sharing and loving. When we are generous, when we don't hold on whatever we have, it has a way of taking away our fear for tomorrow. There's a man uh, in Annapolis, a friend of my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law from Uganda was visiting. And this guy said, hey, Joel, let's go out for lunch. And when they went out for lunch, he said, oh, by the way, Joe, don't forget, you'll be paying for your lunch. Joe said, you asked me to go there. The rest I wasn't going to go to the restaurant. I don't have any money. I just came from Africa. What, what are you going to tell me pay for $45? Well, some other brothers from church overheard. And they said, hey, Joe, Joe, I'll take care of that. Oh, this brother quickly said, oh, no, no, I was just kidding. No, he wasn't kidding. This man is single, never married, because he thinks if he gets married, the women will spend his money. He has no friends because he thinks that friends will take his money. He's a hoarder. He's holding everything to himself. Let me tell you, church, the more you hold things to yourself, the more you worry about what you have. But when you're generous and you give it away in God's love and compassion, guess what? You don't worry how much you have or what you don't have because God will take care of you. God will make a way. Church, God is no debtor of anybody. When you do some act of kindness, the almighty God is watching. And the almighty God will reward you someday. Why do you worry? On this Thanksgiving Eve, he says, just trust. Church, develop the attitude of trusting God all the time. Build yourself in the trusting the Heavenly Father, that he knows what is going on. He knows the best for you. But you got to know his priorities. What does God want for you? What does God want us to do? How to live? What is the number one value of life? Seek his kingdom. What is God's kingdom? God's kingdom is about bringing love and healing and love to those who are in need. Worry will take away your joy. Worry will stop you from trusting God. And worry will stop you from doing God's will. I want to encourage you tonight. The way to defeat anxiety is to trust in God's providence. Church, when I came to the United States over 30 years ago, my father bought me a one-way ticket. My father said, Chris, I don't have a lot of wealth to give you. But he said, I give you God. I give you your one-way ticket and $300. Go your way. God will take care of you. Church, God has never failed to provide for me for 30 years. I've had a family everywhere I've been. In Rockville, in Pennsylvania, in Maryland, all over Maryland. God has given me family. I had an American mom, she's now gone to be with the Lord. That short little white woman adopted me as her son. She didn't have much, but she said, Chris, what I have you eat. And God will provide for us. And God did. If we trust ourselves in his care, God will always make 
a way for us. The one way, to another way to overcome anxiety and worry is to, re re to remember the value you are to God. You're a child of God. You think God is going to leave us to starve? And you, leave, you think God is going to abandon us? In Isaiah 55, it says a mother will abandon her child, but not God. Sadly, there are some mothers who abandon their children. Many fathers who abandon their children. But God will never. He says our names are written on the palm of his hand. He knows us. And may that help us to overcome the worry and the anxiety that seems to take over. Another remedy to overcome anxiety is to seek God's kingdom. God's way of living. When we trust God and live in his way. All we are doing every day is thank God for the new day. Thank God because he's blessed me. Not because I'm driving a Mercedes Benz, not because I'm driving a 100, 200,000 car, but God has blessed me driving my Toyota Corolla. God has blessed me by driving my Honda. God has blessed us so much. If we woke up every morning and we gave thanks to God, we would defeat anxiety and worry in our society. There are so many people in the United States who worry about everything, and yet God has given us so much here in the United States. Sometimes I wish I can take some of you, some of the people, and just take them to Africa for two weeks to just see what's out there. And I bet you when you come back, you'll be praising God every day. Thank God for what I have at home. Thank God for the blessings. On this Thanksgiving Eve, we come to thank God for his generous ways that he has poured his bounty to us. The wonderful food, the wonderful clothes. You all look beautiful and wonderful. The wonderful things that God has blessed us, the access to communication that we have to talk to everybody and communicate with everybody. Do not let worry and anxiety steal your joy on this Thanksgiving Eve and day tomorrow. Do not let anxiety rob the joy that our God, God has given us. God has blessed us so much. Church, when we worry, we tend to harm others. Because when we worry, we also try to want to control other people. The natural response to worry is, am I, am I in charge? Am I in control of my surroundings? Is everything in control? Am I going to survive? And by the time you know, you want to control everybody in your life. And sometimes when they don't comply with your controlled desire, guess what? There's anger, there's jealousy. But when you trust God, that God will take care of you, you will not make room for aggression or violence. Because you've trusted the Lord. Because you agreed to let God be your strength, your joy. If someone else has something better than you, thank God you bless them. If somebody else is in a, a better situation, thank God in good health. And you pray for yourself that God will bless you. But when you worry, you can hurt others. The only way to overcome worry and, 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 and anxiety is to thank God for everything God has done for everyone. Thank God for my brother, for my sister, for the skill, for the gifts, for the talents they have. Instead of saying, how dare they, who do they think they are? I just thank God, oh, what a beautiful voice. What a beautiful talent. Being a disciple of Jesus Christ is about trusting that God will make a way for each one of us. That God will provide for us. How about every morning waking up and counting your blessings? How about this Thanksgiving Day? 
counting your blessings. Say one, two, list, one blessings that all things that God has done for you. When you become aware of what God has done for you, you'll be aware of the presence of God. The only thing will be, thank God you were with me all along. Thank God you walked with me all along. Train your eyes. Train yourself to see and discover the signs of God's faithfulness. Do you see God's faithfulness in everything? How God spared my mother last September last year when she almost died of COVID. My brothers called me and said, Chris, mommy's dying. And yet God spared her. My brother said, I'll go out. I'll pray some more. I'll come back in and I'll see her life going down. I'll go out. I'll pray some more and come back in. You can't help but say, God has been wonderful. The more you count the blessings, the more you become aware of God's presence. The more you become acutely aware that God has been with you all the way. Train yourself to check to find God's faithfulness. Some folk who have left the church, who have left the faith, think they can do things on their own. They think God has abandoned them. They don't see God's hand in their lives. I pray that my brothers and sisters, as you go tonight and tomorrow, you can see God's hand, how he spared your child, your daughter, your son, how God spared you from danger. Count your blessings. Trust God. And as you trust him, you will defeat anxiety. You'll, sh you'll push it out because then it won't, have a, it won't have room or space. Finally, my brothers and sisters, be generous this Thanksgiving. Don't let worry rob you of the joy of Thanksgiving. Rather, wake up and praise him. Give God the credit for what God has done. He promised, I will always be with you. Let him walk with you. Let God bless you. Amen. Lord, we thank you because you promised in your word to be with us. Sometimes we worry. You know each one of us, how we are warriors. But we thank you because now we can trust you. We'll continue to trust you. We're going to seek your presence so we become acutely aware of your presence. Fill our lives with your presence every day and help us open our eyes to see you at work in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let us pray. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above, so we lift our hearts to you, O God, in praise and thanksgiving as we count our blessings and acknowledge your goodness. We thank you for plentiful harvests, for full refrigerators, and we ask you to supply the needs of those who are hungry and in need. We give you thanks for the beauty of the earth, the sky and the sea, for the richness of mountains, plains and rivers, for the wonder of your creatures, large and small, and for everything around us. We praise you for all these good gifts and pray for your guidance as we enjoy and protect them for generations to come. We praise you, O God, for creating all peoples in your image. We thank you for the diversity of races and cultures in this world. Show us your presence in those who differ from us and enrich our lives with their fellowship until our knowledge of your love is made perfect in our love for all of your children. We pray for our community, Lord, for those of all ages, backgrounds, education, employment status, political affiliation, and religious viewpoints, all of those who are our neighbors. We pray for those we know by name and for those about whom we know so little. Bless our homes and families and let your love and peace shine in this community. Turn smiles into conversations and strangers into friends. O oh God, our eternal King, we pray for our national, state, and local government leaders that they may walk with humility and integrity. May they put the needs of others before themselves and be true servant leaders. May they not be so proud that they cannot hear the wisdom of others, but instead seek out good counsel and follow it. May they be honest, morally upright, and have strong principles in line with your standard of righteousness. Encourage them to work, work for the benefit of all people. O oh, gracious God, you are the only source of life and health. We ask for your help, comfort, and strength to all those who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit, that weakness may be turned into strength and confidence in your loving care. Bless the work of all doctors, surgeons, and hospital staff, and bring the power of your healing through their hands. Bless all caregivers with your patience, mercy, and compassion. Inspire them to minister with loving kindness and to share the peace of your Holy Spirit with everyone that they meet. And we give you thanks, O Lord our God, for all your servants and witnesses of time past, for Abraham and Sarah who followed you in faith, for Moses the lawgiver and Aaron the priest, for Miriam and Joshua, for Deborah and Gideon, for Samuel with Hannah his mother, for David king over Israel, for Isaiah and all the prophets, for Mary the mother of our Lord, for Peter and Paul and all the, the apostles, for Mary and Martha, for Mary Magdalene, for Stephen the first martyr, and for all martyrs and saints in every age and in every land. In your mercy, O Lord, give us, as you gave to them, the hope and salvation, the promise of eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead, the one who came to give us life and hope and salvation. In his name we pray as he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
I want to thank you all for joining us tonight as we gather for worship on this eve of Thanksgiving. Um, there are offering plates in the back uh, right before you exit the doors there. The offering tonight goes to REACH. If you didn't bring anything with you but like to give online, there's a QR code in your bulletin, or you can go to our uh, website and give that way towards the, the REACH shelter. I invite you to stand now for our benediction. Let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts, for as members of one body you are called to live in peace. And always be thankful. Let the message about Christ and all its riches fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all wisdom that he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together our sending hymn. <laughs> Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.